Let's begin with an empty scene in Blender 2.8. Let's set up our scene to model in millimeters. Click on the arrow next to Units and change the unit scale to 0.001. Unit system should be metric and change the length to millimeters. In the Overlays popover menu at the top, change the Guide Scale to 0.001 as well. Now our scene is ready to model objects for export to a 3D printing service like Shapeways or just other applications at a real-world scale. Now let's add an Icosphere object to the scene. Open the Operator Toolbar panel at the lower left and change the subdivisions to 1, and then change the radius to 20 millimeters. Press Tab for Edit Mode. With everything still selected, press Ctrl E to bring up the Edge panel. Select Edge Split from the list. Press 3 to enter Face Select Mode. Notice that Edge Split has detached all the faces of our object into separate parts. Press A to select all. Change the Transform Orientation at the top from Global to Normal. Then change the pivot point to individual origins. Now press R, then Z, then type the number 22 on the keyboard. This sequence of hotkeys will tell Blender to apply a 22 degree rotation to each face using the Z axis. If you check the toolbar panel, you should see 22 degrees as the rotation angle on the Z axis using the normal orientation. Press Alt-S to engage the Shrink Flatten tool. Move the faces inwards toward the center until you see the adjoining edges of each face forming five individual pyramid shapes intersecting each other as shown. Try to get the edges as close as possible without too large of a gap between them. An offset of 11.6 millimeters should do the trick here. Now bring up the Merge panel and use the By Distance option. Change the Merge Distance to around 0.1 millimeters, or until you see 40 vertices have been removed. This will weld all the points and create five tetrahedron shapes intersecting each other. They're all still separate components, but all the corner points are welded. At this point, we can create the scaffolding struts required for our tangle. With all the faces selected, press I twice to invoke the individual inset tool. Inset the faces until you see some of the edges about to touch. We want to get the edges as close as we can without overlapping. If you see any overlapping edges on your inset, just adjust the thickness parameter slightly until the edges are no longer crossing. In this case, a thickness setting of 1.715 millimeters was just right. Once you're happy with the inset, press X and choose Faces. This will leave us with the skeleton of our tangle. Each of the tetrahedron are now perfectly interlinked, but they're no longer manifold, so this object at this stage would still not be suitable for 3D printing. Instead, we're going to have to manually solidify each separate tetrahedron frame by hand to get the best result. Hover your cursor over the corner or top of any tetrahedron and press L on the keyboard. Press Shift-H to hide all of the unselected parts. This will allow us to work freely on just this one object. Press 2 for Edge Select Mode. Now select the two boundary edges along one of the rails of the tetrahedron. 
Press F to bridge a face between the two selected edges. Repeat this process six times for all of the boundary edges around the object. Once you're finished, go to the Select menu. Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. Simply press F again to close the holes with polygons. Press A to select all the edges, then Control E to bring up the Edge Tool panel. Choose Mark Freestyle Edge. This will create a green highlight on all the edges of this component. Alt-H to unhide all the other components. You can clearly see the object we were just working on is highlighted with the green edges. This will help us keep track of which components we've already finished and which ones we still have yet to complete. Select another individual part, Shift-H to hide all of the other parts, then repeat the same steps we used in the previous component. Using this method of manually solidifying each part, We'll ensure not only that we're dealing with a solid manifold shape, but also keep some good clean geometry on the object. Since each rail of our tetrahedron is manually closed, we know that there are no overlapping edges or uneven faces like could occur with the solidify modifier in this particular case. I'll fast forward through the rest of the process so that we can save some time here. But if you need to recall the process again, just go back to the creation of the first component and review the steps from there as you go. Okay, now that all the parts on the tangle are manifold, we can move on to the other steps. This particular step is optional, but for some of you who may want to render out this object for motion graphics or other rendering purposes, UV coordinates could come in handy. So let's add some. Select all the edges. Alt-E for the edge menu and choose Mark Seam. This will create a UV seam on all the edges. Go to the UV Editing Workspace tab and in the UV menu, select Unwrap from the list. On the left-hand side, you should see the UV islands are generated for you automatically. Go to the Shading tab, create a new material for the object if one is not already assigned. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can simply click on the principled BSDF node and press Ctrl-T to automatically generate a new texture mapping structure. By default, it will include a image texture node. I'm just going to delete that for now and replace it with a simple noise node. I'll also bring in a bump node and then I'll hook everything up accordingly. The factor of the noise texture will drive the height parameter of the bump node. I'll just attach the bump into the normal parameter of the principled shader. And then I'll adjust the texture scale of the mapping node to around 50 on both the X and Y parameters. Then we can just tweak the scale of the noise texture itself until we're happy with the look of the bumps. Next, I'll give it a simple base color and then a darker subsurface color of the same hue. Then I'll increase the subsurface strength parameter to something like 0.45 and play around with the specular and roughness settings until I'm happy with the look. I'm going for a rough, flexible plastic look here. Now I'll just give the seam some ambient occlusion and change some of the parameters for the EV renderer. This is just for previs and not really for the final render, but I'll play around with the settings a bit until I get a look that I'm happy with. Nothing here is set in stone and you are free to adjust the parameters or a, apply PBR materials to the object uh, just as you would with any model in Blender. 
Experiment with the settings and get your own custom look going for the model. At this point, it's entirely up to you how you want it to look in a render or in an animation even. And uh, you, can get a, you can get a lot of cool looks just on the, uh, based on the shape of this model. Another optional thing we can do here is if you don't like the hard edges of the model and you just want to round them out slightly, feel free to go back into the editor level and add a bevel to all the edges. Um, I'd recommend going with a bevel of perhaps two segments at least and keep the offset width very small, uh, just enough to soften the points and the edges to catch light in a render or to keep it from breaking at the tips during 3D printing. That concludes this lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed creating this orderly tangle and hopefully learned a couple things in Blender 2.8. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like, that would really be appreciated. Also, perhaps subscribe to the channel if you like this type of 3D modeling content. And don't forget to click that bell icon to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for all the support, and I will see you in the next video.